Endless Highway, a short story, written in red by Jake LaFrance. I drive. I drive because the fate of the world depends on it. Don't get me wrong. There is no destination I have to reach. The simple act of me driving is what keeps the world spinning. If I were to one day stop driving, bad things would happen. Trust me. I'm not entirely sure why this is. To be honest, I'm not even sure when I realized this fact. All I know is that if I stop driving, the world will become unbalanced. I drive a Honda Accord. I don't know what year it is. I don't think it really matters. All I know is that it gets me to where I need to go. Where am I going? You might as well ask me how rockets work. I have no clue. I don't even know where I am half the time. I don't have a map of any kind. I certainly don't have a cell phone in my pocket. The only time I know where I am is when I see a sign welcoming me to any given state. After a few hours, I forget again which state I'm in. I don't have a very good memory. I don't always drive on the highway. Sometimes I get off and start driving around secluded suburbs. It's a nice change of pace, and I actually get to see people walking around. I even wave to them occasionally. They even wave back sometimes. But I can feel it coming. A sudden sense of overwhelming dread drowns out my thoughts. It's hard to breathe. I can feel the world start to split open from its core. I can feel the world shake uncontrollably. It's coming. It's coming. And I have to stop it. I leave the quiet suburbia and quickly get back on the endless highway. Then, and only then, does the dread disappear and the foundation of the world settles. I don't drive particularly fast. Why should I? I'm in no hurry. I have nowhere to go after all. I stay in the slow lane and normally don't go over 70. A few cars blare their horn behind me before they eventually zoom past me. If only they knew what I was doing for them. I don't sleep. Not anymore. The world can't afford for me to get any shut eye. That's okay. I like driving at night. It's very peaceful. Sometimes there's not another car on the road for miles. It can get lonely, but I just remind myself why I'm doing this in the first place. The fate of the world is in my hands. I sometimes wonder why this has happened. Why me? Why does it have to be me who has to drive all day and all night? Well, it has to be someone. Why not me? My life wasn't so special beforehand. At least, I don't think it was. This at least gives my life purpose. A terrifying amount of responsibility. I wonder sometimes, what happens when I die? I can't drive around the country forever. I can do it for a very long time, but I will eventually die. What happens then? Does the world begin to fall apart? Or does the deed get passed on to another unsuspecting soul? I hope it's the latter. I would feel deflated if I knew I was essentially a ticking time bomb. I also wonder why specifically driving? What does driving have to do with the world staying as it is? I don't get it. But then again, there's a lot of things that don't make sense to me. The world can be a confusing place. The voice in my head sometimes asks why I'm really driving around the country. It doesn't seem to believe me when I tell it that the fate of the world as we know it is at stake. I have a theory, it said to me once. I think you're driving because you're running away from something. Yeah, that's it. You did something all right, something bad. And now you're on the run, trying to hide. Don't want to get caught. I told the voice that this was absurd. What could I have possibly done? And why would I still be driving across the country? I can't remember how long it's been precisely, but I know I've been on the road for at least a year. You would think that if I had done something bad, I would have been caught by now. 
You would also think that I would have settled down somewhere after a while, once they stopped looking for me. No, it just didn't add up. I know I'm doing a good thing by driving. I'm not running away from anything. I can't drive continuously, however. I do need to stop occasionally. For a few reasons, that is. One, I have to go to the bathroom. Two, I have to eat. Three, I have to get gas for the car. Luckily, I can do all three of these things at gas stations, so I don't have to stop driving for too long. For some reason, I think I am allowed to make these kinds of stops. Whenever I do, the world doesn't seem to be in any kind of danger, so long as I am quick. I'm driving along down a highway now. I see a sign welcoming me to the state of Texas. I look at the gas meter and see that I am almost empty. Lucky for me, there's a sign saying that there's a gas station one mile ahead on the next exit. I don't like to think about what would happen if I were to run out of gas on the road. Those kinds of thoughts are why I have to check the gas meter routinely every 30 minutes. I take the exit on the right and within two minutes I am at the gas station. I pull up to one of the pumps, put the car in park, and turn off the car. I get out and stretch my legs and my back. I walk into the gas station. I nod at the cashier as I walk to the bathroom. After I'm done, I buy a few snacks, drinks, and a couple slices of pizza. I walk back out to the car and put my items in the passenger seat. After I start pumping gas into the car, another car pulls up to the pump beside me. A beautiful woman steps out of the car, stretches, and yawns. She begins pumping as well. I make eye contact with her and she smiles at me. How's it going? She asked. Good, I say. How about you? Good, she sighs. Long day, though. I've been driving for a few hours now. I know how you feel. I've been driving for a while, too. Where are you driving to? I can't help but smile at her innocent question. To be honest, I said, I'm not entirely sure. She laughed. So, you're just driving around? What, for the hell of it? You could say that. How long have you been driving for? I shook my head. I don't remember, really. She finished pumping her car with gas and walked over to my side of the pump. You're a very secretive person, aren't you? We all have our secrets, I said, as I finished putting gas in my car. She moved closer to me and stopped, putting one hand on her hip and the other hand on the back of my car. What's your name? Before I had time to answer her, her face suddenly changed. She seemed confused for a brief moment. Then she seemed concerned. She sniffed audibly. She held her mouth open in a look of disgust. She immediately covered her nose with both hands. Oh my god, the woman said, holding her nose. What's that awful smell? She backed away a few feet. She pointed to the back of my car. It's coming from your trunk. I sniffed the air as I stood next to the trunk of my car. I could smell it too. It wasn't pleasant, to say the least. It was like nothing I had smelled before. I couldn't describe it if I tried to. That overwhelming sense of dread was upon me. It was stronger than it had ever been. This was new. It never happened when I stopped for gas. If the woman could sense it, she sure wasn't showing it. I knew I needed to get back on the highway, but something was telling me that I needed to open the trunk. Something outside of myself was drawing me to it. I had to know. I pulled my key out of my pocket. As I did, I could feel the world start to split open. This was a dangerous game I was playing. As I slowly began to direct the key into the slot, I could feel the world's core begin to violently shake. I needed to do this quickly and get back onto the road. I slid the key into the slot. My head was pounding and the world at its core was falling apart. I turn the key and hear a clicking sound. Something tells me that I have sealed the world's fate by taking so long. The world had suffered irreversible damage. At any moment, the world would crack in a billion places and everyone would fall into the bottomless pit of the earth before the world ignited in flames and exploded from the inside out. 
I pop open the trunk. All I see is darkness. I hear the faint sound of a woman screaming. I am back in my car. It's night out. I am driving. I see a lighted sign welcoming me to the state of Arizona. I look over to the passenger seat and see that I have eaten most of the snacks. I only have one drink left. There's a small cardboard box with grease stains, but I can't remember what it was I ate. I don't have a very good memory. I hear the voice in my head speak. You're running away from something. No, you did something. No, something bad. I tell the voice that I didn't do anything. I tell the voice that I've done nothing but drive because that's what I do. I drive. I drive on the seemingly endless highway across the country. If I don't, the world as we know it would cease to exist. Bad things would happen. So I drive. 